viewers, welcome to day 50 of the last 100 days of 2015. Today we're playing Zombie and Juliet. Zombie and Juliet is a 2D action hack and slash game and is pretty unique. The goal of the game is to defeat the demon lord at the end of the hallway, but to get there you have to make your way through three doors first. As soon as you start attacking a door, minions will spawn and attack you. You will have to divide your attention between damaging the door and killing the minions. Once you destroy the door, minions will stop spawning until you attack the next door. The existing minions will still be there though. The gameplay mostly revolves around getting enough currency to purchase good gear and get enough levels to get good spells. Once you have good gear and good spells, the game becomes pretty easy. I won't go into strategies too much, but let's just say that regeneration, health, defense and evasion are pretty useful. In the beginning of the game, you get the choice of three weapons. A dagger, a sword or a staff. Each weapon comes with its own ultimate. The dagger has fire tornado, the sword has avalanche and the staff has tidal wave. These abilities can't be changed. You can't get firestorm on your staff, for example. When choosing your first weapon, keep in mind that the staff is the only ranged weapon, but that the staff is also the only single target weapon. It is really hard to defeat multiple minions with the staff, while it is way easier with the sword and the dagger. I ended up going for the dagger as my final weapon, simply because I invested a lot of skill points into the fire tornado skill before I realized that I couldn't use that with the staff I chose as my first weapon. Once you level up, you get skill points, and even though it would make sense to invest them in the ultimate of your weapon, you can also invest them in the second skill of any of the skill trees. These skills will help you stay alive longer, which in turn makes you level up faster. I especially want to point out that putting points in this fire tree will get you the more souls per kill upgrade, which is very useful to get to the better weapons. Anyway, you can figure out the skills for yourself. Let's have a look at how to beat the boss. I personally just went for a combination of basic attacks and my ultimate. I would charge up my ultimate, run towards the boss, use my ultimate and attack him a couple of times. Then he teleports away and I run away too to reset the cooldown of my ultimate and regenerate my lost health. Once I'm at full health again, I just have to attack twice to get my ultimate back and I repeat the process. Once you get the boss to low health, he will no longer teleport away, but he will te teleport directly in front of you. To get away from him, just run one direction, wait for the teleport, then run the other direction. That way you can get away from him and regenerate your health in peace. Overall, this game is very nice to play, but it does have some issues. Flying enemies are insanely hard to kill and they do massive damage. So just stay away from them if you can. It's just a bad job in the balancing and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just very frustrating, but hey, what can you do? Also, you can just farm up souls in the lower levels because enemies keep respawning as long as you don't take down the door. So just attack the door once and keep killing enemies for insanely easy farming. I didn't do this because I wouldn't have enjoyed the game that way, but the fact that you can do it is kind of a problem. Every time you enter the shop or get an achievement, the game lags for multiple seconds. I don't know why, but like in other games, I assume it's a server check of some kind, although I don't know why you would want that in a Flash game. It's annoying, but fortunately it doesn't interrupt the game too much. The final verdict then. Zombie and Juliet is very good, even though the flying enemies were really, really annoying and ruined my early game enjoyment of the game. Also, the game is relatively short, making that it becomes a little repetitive. But still, it's definitely worthy of recommendation. So go play and rescue Romeo from death. Hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.